This workshop isn't just going to be a place for building. It's also going to be an awesome space where I can have a bunch of fun. So you'll see that I'm going to start adding some pretty cool things to the workshop. One of those things is a basketball hoop. So let's build one. Oh, did you notice I just made four in a row without moving my feet? No big deal. Okay, first step is to map it out. My door opening is just over nine feet tall. So a 10 foot rim will sit just about a foot above the door. Perfect. I measured it to get the exact 10 foot mark. I'm going for regulation size here. I taped where the small box on the backboard goes just above the rim. It's two feet wide by 18 inches tall. I put a few pieces of tape where I thought would make a good edge for the backboard. A regulation backboard is four feet tall by six feet wide. That's kind of gnarly and definitely unnecessarily big for this space. So I cut a foot off of either dimension. Mine will be three by five. I mean, I don't need that big of a backboard because I don't miss. I marked up a sheet of half inch plywood left over from the walls and cut it down to size. I even marked the outline of the inside square. The line for that box is two inches wide. I brought up the bracket that mounts directly to the backboard and marked the location of the holes I needed to make. The 10 foot mark is exactly the top edge of the bottom line, so that's where I lined up the top of the bracket. I gave the entire thing a really good sanding, then rounded the edges with the roundover bit on the router, and followed that with another round of sanding on the edges. I was extra sure that the four corners lost their sharp points and were nice and soft. I gave it a really good vacuuming before bringing it outside. I decided to spray paint the backboard, so I started with the white boxes. For the large border, I just made sure to get at least two inches of coverage from the edge. The plywood edges needed a few passes because they just don't take paint very well. For the inside box, even though I sanded, I could just barely see the pencil marks enough to know where to paint. The white got a few solid coats to get full coverage. After waiting an appropriate amount of time for the paint to dry, which happened pretty quickly because it was windy, I moved on to taping up for the blue. I first marked the two inch line for the outside box. I used frog tape to cover the box. It took two rows of tape to get the side edges covered as well. The spray paint had covered the marks for the inner box, so I had to remark this too. The tape I'm using is 1.88 inches wide, and I need to cover a line two inches wide, so this took two rows as well. I cut the ends of the tape with scissors to get a clean outside edge. Then, I went to town with the blue. This is a decent sized area to spray paint, but I managed to get full coverage with one can. It took one really solid pass and a few lighter passes to get it completely. By the way, both the white and blue spray paints are gloss finishes. When the paint had sat for a few minutes, I pulled off the tape. No need to have the tape sit here and risk anything peeling up when fully cured. Man, this thing was already looking good. When the paint had fully dried, I brought it inside and attached this black rim I bought. I think this color scheme makes it look sleek. The rim was really easy to attach, though I forgot to add one very important piece, so I had to disassemble a tiny bit in order to add that in. <laughs> That's what I get when I avoid reading the instructions. Okay, to attach it to the wall, I'm gonna pop eight screws through the backboard. I pre-drilled with a countersink bit to make it look clean when the screws are in. The bolts that came with the rim to attach it to the backboard were much longer than I needed, so I cut off the excess. This backboard will only be an inch or so from the wall, so the longer bolts won't even fit. Knowing the distance from the bottom of the backboard to the rim, I installed a temporary shelf so the entire thing would install with the rim at exactly 10 feet. I added some squishy foam to the wall behind where the backboard will go. The two layers here will hopefully absorb a decent amount of the impact on the backboard and prevent tools and stuff from falling off the wall. Hopefully it helps dampen the sound as well. There's no science behind it, it's just a Hail Mary. I brought the backboard up to attach it on the wall. I put screws in the eight holes already, so all I had to do was drive them in. I attached one screw up top, 
then stepped away to see if it was centered on the wall. I was off by an inch or so, so I adjusted it. Attached one screw again, checked for level, then attached the other seven screws. I threw on the net, which actually went on really easily. Before even moving the ladder, I took my first shot. I don't know if it's a good omen for the first shot to score, but if it was, then I've got 10 years of good luck coming my way. A regulation free throw is 15 feet away from the center of the circle of the rim. I measured and placed a strip of tape so I can work on my free throws. As a stuntman, I need to be pretty good at everything. I'm really good at baseball, I'm an all-star soccer player, but if you were to ask me what my worst sport is, my answer would be basketball. Ironically enough, right after I finished building this, I got a call to do basketball stunts for a TV show. So I had the perfect place to brush up on my skills. Good timing, huh? I think this is a pretty cool addition to my workshop. I'll have to be careful when I'm building a delicate machine, but it'll be cool to be able to play inside, even on a rainy day. Oh, and if you're worried about the lights, don't worry, the cover is plastic, so it can take a little bit of a beating. They're pretty high up too, and I have yet to hit them. With every project that I complete, this place is starting to feel more like home. Okay, that's it for now. See ya.